Jakarta. So there may be a couple of reasons why you clicked on this video. Either you feel like you're too slow and you can't figure out how to get faster in your playing or you just like what I do. But anyway, regardless of that, we're going to talk about how to get faster, how to play faster and what you need to know. Five things, five tips you need to know as far as playing faster and to help you accomplish that goal. So number one, pace yourself. OK, so let me explain. I'm going to use the same exact groove that I played in the beginning, and it may sound familiar to you because it's a Jaco Pastorius line. I tweaked it a little bit, but it's. <laughs> And you get the idea. So it's from a Jaco Pastorius line, but I'm going to use this throughout the video. So what I mean by that is when I first started learning this groove, it was a little tough for me to learn and to play because of the double notes. My right hand had to work a little bit harder than it's used to. Just in that. So just pace yourself not really getting upset or angry with yourself that you can't play at that speed. And Jocko, we all know, was a speed demon. He was a monster. He was so clean and pre precise with his playing. It just sounded like he was going lightning speed whenever he played, but don't get hung up on that. Pace yourself, slow it down. I had to slow it down myself. <laughs> until I can get it up to speed. So just pacing yourself, taking it slow, not worrying about how fast you're going and you know how quick you're going to get there. So pace yourself, that's number one. Number two, I mentioned it already, play clean, clear, and precise. It's something that I always say every single time. If you've been watching for any length of time, at the end of every single lesson, I say, make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. I don't know how that happened. That's just been my thing. But clean, clear, and precise is so beneficial, so crucial to be able to play clean, clear, and precise Otherwise, I wouldn't know what you're playing. It'll be muddy, it'll be messy, it'll be fumbly, it'll just, it'll be terrible. So clean, clear, and precise when you're playing these notes. So the misconception, let me go off topic for a second. Well, it's not off topic. The misconception that people have when playing fast or having a lot of speed is the fact that you don't need to be clean. Say for instance, if I played that same exact line and I played it fast, but it wasn't clean. <laughs> I can play it super, super fast, but was that clean? Absolutely not. So clean, clear, and precise so I can hear every single note that you play, or you can hear every single note that you play and identify what you're playing, okay? So clean, clear, and precise, that's number two. Well, that's three words, but that's number two. I always like to gather those together. Clean, clear, precise, boom. Let's go to number three. So the third tip you need to focus on when trying to achieve a faster speed is playing with space. Now let me explain. You may be thinking that I'm talking about, you know, when you're improvising or soloing, just putting that space in between the notes. No, when you're playing a line or playing an exercise, I preach about this all the time when I'm giving out practice routines and exercises and things like that, I always say, play it with space. So more so meaning staccato. So when you're playing an exercise like this, let's take a chromatic exercise, for example. You hear how all the notes are running into each other. In between each note, there's no space. What I mean by space is playing staccato. Trust me, it sounds weird, it feels weird, but in the end, your notes will become more separate. And when you get to that lightning speed, you'll be able to hear every single and identify every single note that's coming out. So practicing with that space in between, just lifting up in between each note will get you ready for those fast, crazy... So that's what playing with spaces will do for you. Play everything, every exercise, staccato and legato, meaning playing every single note running into each other and then every single note separately. So in due time, you'll be able to achieve that clean, precise sound whenever you go that lightning speed. So number four. So number four is a technique thing, making sure your right hand and your left hand is in sync with each other. So basically meaning, you know how a piano player has two hands and they can play different things uh, with this hand, different things with that hand. We need to be the opposite. We need to be able to play the same exact thing with the same hand in the same time. So playing and practicing exercises that make sure your hands are in sync with each other is beneficial and crucial to the speed game. 
So just making sure one, two, one, two is in sync with one, two, three, four. You wanna make sure you're utilizing that second finger, one, two, one, two, because when you're playing with one finger, if you have a habit of playing with one finger, you can only play so fast. So two legs is better than one, right? So one simple exercise that I like to do to practice this technique is really all of the exercises that I do, you don't really have to discriminate between the exercises. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a uh, arpeggiated exercise, a chromatic exercise, uh, just a scale, it doesn't matter. But just making sure you're utilizing two and one on your right plucking hand. So one exercise I like to do is a chromatic exercise. That will increase the dexterity on your left hand or your fretting hand, but also utilizing one and two. So it's just a chromatic exercise doing two, one, three, two, four, three, right? And then one, four, back to the same string, back to the original string. And then you start the process all over again. Two, one, three, two, four, three, two, one, three, two, four, three. The same exact thing. You're doing one, two, one, two, one, two here, but you have to focus a little bit harder on this hand. So as long as you're getting that work in, doesn't matter. I like to do a, a chromatic, not a chromatic, but in arpeggiated exercises um, as well. Major arpeggio, minor, seven arpeggio. Skipping strings, that's a big one too. With that exercise, you can practice skipping those strings as well. Not even skipping strings, but just going uh, further down the strings or not just staying on one string because everybody can be fast on on one string or one note, right? You're playing one note, but you have to make sure the left hand and the right hand are in sync with each other. So that's number four. So number five is a simple one. Play hard. That's really all that's to it. Well, really, it's a little bit more to it. So what I mean by play hard is really literally play. Just make sure you get that buzzing sound. It's just that nasty sound when you're playing. When you're practicing, you play that way. So you're playing hard, you increase that resistance uh, that you have to pull the string and it makes it tougher for you to do so when you're playing hard like that. You have to kind of slow down to play harder that way. Uh, so play everything you play, all the exercises that way. You wanna turn your volume off so I don't blow you guys' ears off. Probably can still hear that. <laughs> So play hard, then when you go to play a little bit quicker, a little bit faster, that resistance decreases, then you have more room or more ability to be able to play faster. So playing hard, you can do this same exact trick with just making sure or, or bringing your action up on your bass, um, just bringing it a little bit higher so your string is away from your fretboard just a little bit more, so you have to work harder to get to it. When you practice that way, then bring it back down. I used to have a bass that you know, the, the action was terrible. The action was very super, super high. So I practiced on that bass and then I came to a bass that was nicely set up and the action was correct <laughs> the way that I liked it. And I would play that way and I would see that speed increase over time. So that's the fifth way. That's one way that you can get around doing it. It's really just strength training, really just kind of, uh, you know, almost like basketball players jumping with weights to be able to dunk the ball or to be able to jump a little bit higher or, you know, high jumpers or whatever you want to call them, uh, to be able to jump higher. So they do that to increase the resistance jumping upward. And then once they take the weights off, you jump again and it feels like, you know, you got a little bit stronger. You can jump a little bit higher because you're training so much with that weight on. It's the same way. You're training so much and you're plucking so hard with the strings being higher. Once you go to play it and it's lower and it's a little bit easier to play, you'll be able to see that speed get a little bit faster. So make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise, like I mentioned before. If you guys have any questions, you guys know what to do down in the comments. I would love to converse with you guys. You guys are awesome. I love coming back every single week and providing you guys with another lesson, another video, another tutorial. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that red subscribe button. I'm gonna get it one day. It's either here or here. I'm gonna figure it out one day. Anyway, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, new subscribers, thank you for coming back. Uh, also, hit that notification bell so you get notified every single week. I'm gonna start posting a little bit more. I'm gonna post a little bit more. Let me know what you wanna see down in the comments uh, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh, first of all, Base Nation Academy, check it out. If you wanna learn more about these exercises, getting faster speed, uh, different licks and different phrases that you can do, check out the Base Nation Academy. Uh, you get more feedback from me. We got live classes, weekly classes, uh, um, webinars, all that good stuff. Courses, slap course, chords, all of that. Check it out, it's in the description. I'll see you guys in the next one, peace.